let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Matthew chapter 20, beginning at the first verse. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the market, marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon, and at about three o'clock, he did the same. At about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have, been, who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Here ends the lesson. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A couple of years ago, I was in a conversation with a group of people, and we were having a conversation about money. And I said a ridiculous thing about money and about how people should be paid. And then somebody in the group looked at me and said I needed to go back and read and reread the parable of the vineyard, which is what I just read you. And I got kind of frustrated and I said, don't you parable of the vineyard me. And then I kind of relented. But at the same time, it made me and gave me pause to think about the parable of the vineyard. First off, it's an awful business decision, as particularly for the next day. If you just think about it in sort of like business terms, first off, the next day, Everybody will know, all of those laborers, that if they just wait around till five o'clock, the guy's going to come and give them the same amount of money if they work all day. So they should just wait around till five. Don't go in the vineyard first. The rumor will start because you're just going to get the same amount. If you wait a while, you can probably go get a job in the morning and then look idle in the afternoon, pick up the second job, make twice as much. It's great. That's the kind of rumor that might get started among the workers. So it really doesn't make much business sense. If any of you have ever served on a church vestry or been around a church, you, uh, you, you will inevitably come to a point in the year where everyone on the vestry will begin to suddenly get really anxious about money, the rector included, and everybody will get anxious about money and how is it we're going to get through this, this budget year. And then somebody around the table, typically a person who runs his or her own business, will kind of set the budget down and kind of get exasperated and say, this is no way to run a business. This isn't a good business. And he or she's right. Church business makes no sense. It's based 
off, often on what's called soft money, meaning a pledged gift. You can think about whether or not you want to make a gift to your church, and then you might make it based off of 10% of your income, but then everybody gets bogged down into the 10% part, a tithe. Should that be 10% pre-tax dollars, 10% post act, where should the 10% come from? And you start sort of nickel and diamond, kind of how you're going to get your 10%. Maybe you're not, a, it's not an obligatory thing. You don't have to pay to go to our church anyway. You're not, you don't have to buy a ticket. It's not a country club. The doors are open. Come on in whenever you want to. Air conditioning seems to be free. So we have an awful business model based on what? Marketing? Is it a product we're giving you? Are we giving you something? We got in trouble many, many years ago selling what they would call indulgences, so it's not really a thing you get. What do you, like a good sermon? So often people go, I don't know, I didn't like that sermon. Well, I encourage every one of you hearing my voice to give giving a sermon a try. It's not easy. So what is it? Are we selling? Jesus, are we giving you? What are we doing in the business of the church? Church business makes no sense. Yeah, because God doesn't make any sense either. Because God is above human economy. God is more than buying and selling. God is more. There's not a price on your life. You're priceless. You're the only one of you. There's not a copy. We can clone you, but that's not you. That's a copy. You're it. One life. However long or short it is, one. There's no amount of money put on that. What's your hourly for existing? What are you worth? I, there's no money on you. You're too precious for that. Which is why when one of us dies, that's the only one of those. A whole world dies when you or I go. People are too precious. Which is probably why we should pay attention a little bit more to this story when we get envious. Many times I've heard it said that the first sin is the sin of comparison. That Adam and Eve, what they do is they compare themselves. They want to be like God, knowing good and evil. And it's in that comparison where we get bogged down. They and them. We listen to they and them a lot. Who are they and them? Who are they? And why do they have so much power over you? They and them are envious. You become a they or them when you're envious. Suddenly it's a parable about grace and goodness and God and you and how much God wants to give you no matter what doesn't make good business sense. We should keep a ledger. We should keep accounts. We should know. Ticking it off. That's not how God works. God's free. Free. Your life was freely given you. And now you have an opportunity to freely give it back. So what are you going to do with your freedom? You have been given freedom to give your life as a sacrifice to the work of God. And the work of God is in healing people, feeding people, serving people. That's the work of God. So maybe we should be more generous with what we have, just like God has been generous to us with what God has. Amen.
Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose blessed Son, before his passion, prayed for his disciples that they may be one, as you and he are one. Grant that your church, being bound together in love and obedience, may be united in one body by the one Spirit, that the world may believe in him whom you have sent. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we could ask or imagine. Glory to Him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.